Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for July 28th. It is a Thursday. It is almost the best damn day of the week, and that would be Friday, which is tomorrow, which is awesome. Can't wait. Can't wait because then I have a week off. I will be going to New York City for some business slash R&R. &R. Uh, taking my wife along, doing a couple of things. Yeah, it should be an awesome time. I'm looking forward to it. I will still try to get my news vids up. I just found it was strange because we're staying kind of close to where the United Nations building is. And none of the hotels offer Wi-Fi. They offer wired that you got to pay for, but it's not offered wireless. I just thought that was strange. I'm just used to hotels offering that. Maybe it's done for security reasons. I don't know. Anybody who is from there know why that is or just bad luck with hotels because it seems like every hotel near that area didn't offer wireless. But anyways, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I've been through New York as a passenger many times, never stopped to actually look around and enjoy it. So looking forward to that. I, like I said, I'll try to keep the new stuff on target and I'll have uh, a lot of the gaming content on scheduled releases while I'm away as well. Now Steam has a sale going on right now, hot on the heels of their summer sale. And we all know about their summer and their winter sales. Great time to get games that you've been kind of keeping an eye on. And usually you can get decent prices on stuff. Well, now they've extended that to be a VR Steam sale. And, you know, there's a couple of aspects to it. There's 100 plus games for Rift and Vive. And obviously most of you know this already, but for those, well, most of you know this. If you don't, be warned, there's some crap there. There's some really bad games in there, right? So, as always, be cautious. Do your research. Make sure, even at 10 bucks, because those add up quick, right? Like, people say, oh, it's only a $10 game, a $5 game. Yeah, but if you're buying 10 or 15 of them, you're spending over $100. You still want some value, right? I mean, that's me. I want some value for that. And I'm all for supporting devs, but... I also kind of want to play some good games. And there's definitely decent titles in there. But just to give you an example, for me personally, there's a 20-game bundle being sold for, I think it's 100 and something dollars. I counted eight games of the 20 that I thought were good games. There's a lot of meh, okay, or cruft to downright terrible in there. But admittedly, a few games that I haven't tried, right? And those could be good, they could be bad. Usually what I'll do is I'll see, okay, look, is the bundled cost saving me, or count the number of games that I'd be willing to buy, and I, am I now saving, or is it break even, or am I paying too much? I don't just look at it as a per game basis, because if you end up not liking 10 of them right off the bat, that's 50%. <laughs> That's, that's a lot of games you don't like, right, in that bundle. So look at it on a, on a per-game basis, and if it looks like it makes sense for you, grab it. It would be a good deal then because I think it's 35%, I calculated, would be your overall savings. So, again, assuming you liked all the games, right? But there's some decent games being sold as individual ones as well and part of this bundle. But uh, Solace Project, I've seen Brookhaven Experiment, so there's definitely some decent games. So if you've been kind of on the fence with some of these games, might be a good time now to take the plunge. Hopefully this becomes a cyclical thing, right? Every season we get a VR sale at least for the first year or two of uh, VR's existence. That would be awesome. Uh, I know a lot of people, you know, they hum and haw with sales. Then it's too late. They wish they had. Well, if they come back once a season, you get an opportunity to do exactly that, right? Without having to wait all the way till the holiday Steam sale. So hopefully that'll be the case. Dota 2 has released a VR social spectator mode through free DLC that they're going to be issuing or have issued. The article wasn't clear on that. 
or I missed it. <laughs> but it will allow you to watch recorded games or games in progress. It's my understanding from reading the article. Now, like I said, it is free DLC, but as to the gameplay value of Dota 2, I can't really comment on it. It's honestly a game that passed me by. That's not to say it's not good. It might be awesome, and it might be a game that I absolutely would just love. It's just not a game I've tried or, you know, tried to get into. There's always something else, right? Um, awesome RPGs at the time, probably Dark Souls <laughs> or... Uh, whatever divinity original sin usually rpgs because those are tend to be my favorite so anyways it passed me by even though i was into rts games i'd probably like that type of strategy game but just haven't tried it but if that's your thing if that's your bag uh know that that's available i can kind of see the appeal watching somebody play you know from a strat point of view right um, i remember i used to do that with starcraft stuff as well you learn strategies that way and different ways of going about it. But um, yeah, whether it's good or not, can't really comment. But still kind of neat. Offer it free. And if you can roam around as a spectator, why not? Now, FOV is a company we talked about um, a few weeks ago. They are the ones that had the successful Kickstarter last summer. They raised $480,000 for the iTracked HMD of theirs. And the picture that I showed at the time of the prototype had basically a fully encased plastic mold for your head, which obviously isn't going to work for everybody because people have different head sizes, right? Skulls come in all shapes, colors, and sizes. And uh, a one-size-fits-all mold is kind of a hard thing to do. So instead, they've opted to change the prototype and adopt the Vive-style material um, head section right where you strap it on so design wise instantly it looks better in terms of how the eye tracking is going to catch on i hope it's a technology that we start using uh, did we need a specific individual hmd that does just that probably not but still the fact that somebody's working on it is a good thing and the fact that we might see this on future incarnations of whatever HMD you decide to back or buy, that can only be a good thing in my books because it will add a lot of depth to games. Now, here's a question I have for you guys. Kind of like the Dota thing passed me by. The only Minecraft I have ever done... Okay, let's rewind a bit. I have played Minecraft. I didn't get Minecraft. There's a Dutch YouTuber named uh, Enzo Knoll. I watch some of his videos sometimes and he talks about funny stuff, but he's just a, like a regular Dutch kid. But anyways, he comes out with Minecraft videos and it looks kind of interesting, but most of the time they're talking about stuff that has nothing to do with the game. You know, the typical, like kind of the leafy stuff, right? Where he's got the game playing, but you're not watching it for the game. I actually really tried it when I played Minecraft, which was the HTC Vive Minecraft mod. So here's the question I have for you guys, not knowing that much about Minecraft. Hopefully somebody can set me straight on this. They keep talking about how soon we are going to be able to play Minecraft in VR on the Rift and the Vive but they never seem to acknowledge that we can already do that. Now Part of me, the assumption that I had was, okay, this is a under the radar mod or it's not official. Is that the case? Is this going to be much better? Because honestly, they had used, I could easily use my Vive controllers. Both of them were working in Minecraft for Vive and it was a pretty damn immersive experience. I can't think of ways to really refine that much more, but anyways, Set me straight on that if anybody knows. What's the, what's the deal with that? Is it going to be better, different, the same, and just branded official, or what? Really curious. Unity 5.4 has released with streamlined multi-platform VR support, which is something that they had kind of been hinting at and flirted with in previous versions, so it's nice to see them go in that direction. Uh, Unity is, look, Unity is not for everybody. I get that. And a lot of times you can look at a Unity game 
and they almost have that same same kind of feel the vibe because they're using like common assets etc right but there's stuff out there that will blow you away that is unity based and wasteland 2 for me personally was a in exile game brian fargo and team rpg based on the original wasteland a sequel to that right and i loved it it did not feel like your standard typical unity game it felt a lot you know more unique than that right is i guess the best word to use for it so um yeah that's going to be uh something that we're probably going to see more of moving forward the ability for tool sets like that to have a far reaching vr impact rather than just being specialized for one platform and that's when i talk about all this stuff i always hope it's going to be a global initiative right in other words vive is doing room scale vr i would hope that the rift at some point follow suit rift has the headset design built in and it's pretty damn good i would hope in a future incarnation vive follow suit and not to say they can't still be innovative i just hope they start traveling down at least common paths of progression that ties into that whole i wish the games were universal and it didn't matter which player you used where it was more like a video card as opposed to a console but some of you had great arguments against that. And granted, those arguments are valid. They stand, absolutely. But it's still a direction I'd like to see us go with VR. Um, I want all of these to be successful because I want VR to be successful, right? Now, there is uh, a game called Dead Secret from Robot Invader that was released on pretty much every VR platform except for Vive. That's going to be available in August. Other than looking at the trailer, which looked kind of interesting, can't comment on if it's a great game or not, but apparently it sold fairly well on the Rift platform. So I'm going to check it out. Uh, I think it was $15, the game. And if the reviews are good, or at least pique my interest, I'll probably pick that up. First thing I did was to see if it was on the Steam sale. Of course it isn't because it's not out yet until August, but um, yeah, it's not there. So I'll, I'll look again in August and make a determination at that point now this next one had me laughing this was a, an article on upload vr by one of you poor schmucks and sorry guys like this is not a personal thing <laughs> but you guys who get motion sick i honestly i feel for you i really do i'm gonna have a sip of beer on your behalf guys because that would suck i love virtual reality I love the fact that I don't even get a hint of that. I can play hour after hour with the most terrible frame rates. Does nothing for my nausea. Does nothing for making my eyes wonky. Like some people need to sit down for an hour. I'm pretty much ready to go put on my shoes and let's go run. Like it's not an issue, right? So I definitely feel for you guys. But anyways, with that in mind, the guy who wrote it, the author of this article, is one of you and has that same issue with nausea and vomiting and the way he made this game sound so the game is called roller coaster dreams and it's going to be a playstation vr launch title and he literally made this thing sound like the vomit comet amusement ride every single ride and if you look at the article and you look at the trailer of the actual game i can kind of see his point like the devs are really having a laugh at all you guys expense who get nauseous because it literally looks like it's geared towards making you want to throw up like everything there's a merry-go-round on there and all you see is it spinning right and anyways the way that the author wrote the article was just hilarious and uh had me bust in the gut it was pretty good but with that said like i said i do feel for you guys that would suck but this is funny as hell so even if you're one of those guys or gals have a read check it out <laughs> let me know what you think the next one was a little strange this is a, a co-creation by the guardian newspaper and a dev firm called the mill they created 
an experience basically and we talked about experiences kind of those one room scenarios that that one company Liverpool's charging for etc cetera, etc cetera. well this is a jail cell experience and it's literally called six by nine a virtual experience of solitary confinement and you've got several people narrating kind of the start of this trailer when you watch it people who've done time explaining the psychological aspects of it and apparently it's like a nine minute long experience but puts you in a jail cell now I've said my piece about short demos that I'd still try them, right? And if they're free, hey, free is free. But at the end of the day, a tech demo is a tech demo. Well, not always. This one definitely piques my interest because, yeah, I kind of do have not a macabre desire. I don't really want to experience it, but I've wondered from time to time what it would be like to be locked in a small jail cell day after day, year after year. Now, Unless you're prepared to sit with this VR helmet for three to six months straight, you can't come out of the experience and start getting tattoos and drinking two beers at once, claiming you're hardcore, because you haven't really done jail time. You're just playing a game. But at least you can hopefully kind of see a snapshot of what it must be like for those guys and ladies, right? In the female pens. Unless it's like orange is a new black, but that's a whole different direction. Anyways, uh, just interesting. And I'm definitely going to try that out. Uh, unless they charge a lot for it. Then I'm not interested. All right, guys. That's it for me. Until the next one. Have an awesome one as always. Cheers, guys.